Hi everyone. Today's dialogue comes to you from far away Berlin. And uh, it's a subject that we've been discussing with some colleagues last night. And it's about policy, global resource policy, resource control, financial instruments, and ultimately capitalism and colonialism. Now, it just struck me that the worst mistake the Maasai people could make right now in Kenya is accept the handover, quote unquote handover, of Amboseli National Park to the Kadiadu County government or to the Ma community as large at large. It's a poison chalice. Look and this is why I think so. Looking at Kenya, the rangelands basically Maasai land and in the north sort of control also other pastoralist groups, but basically the mass speaking people. If we look at Maasai land up to Samburu and Count Samburu, their land is being taken over. First, it was lost to the a whole chunk of it was lost to the British um, last century, early last century. Now it's being lost to conservation interests. But behind the conservation interests, I've realized that it's being lost to American control, the US government. And this is the mechanism through which it's happening. There's this organization called TNC, the Nature Conservancy. It's a proxy of Western capital, American capital, not just um, corporations, but US government as well. And that's why it's heavily funded by USAID versus various Western corporations. And what's happening now is that they've taken control of the Northern Rangelands through this, their proxy, the Northern Rangelands Trust. And that, that's complete now. Even KWS sort of has been completely emasculated in that part of the country. Um, the same thing has happened with a lot more ease actually in the Mara area because, okay, Masai Mara, world famous uh, wildlife reserve, but has never been in recent history under government control. It's always been under Narrow County Council and now Narrow County Government. So they quickly formed the Masai Mara Wildlife Conservancies Association funded by USAID and put that together and presented to themselves to the Narrow County Government as a partner. So they've They've now taken over the land surrounding the re what's called the reserve and basically control the reserve. The reserve can't be an island on control in this ocean of USA, US government control. So when you control the seascape around an island, you control the island. So by controlling the surrounding lands, they control the Mara as well. And land use and planning and political power around that area because the people there now have to ask someone ask some authority that's not even local to kenya over what they want to do with their land even things like land use planning etc are now in foreign hands so which brings me to kajiado um again this is one of the last remaining spheres of kenya wildlife service control in kenya right now kenya wildlife service controls the sabu conservation area Nairobi National Park, Nakuru uh, National Park and Conservation Area, and Amboseli. The rest is lost. So now we are being told Amboseli is being handed over. First questions that everyone has been asking for years, ever since Kibaki tried the same nonsense some years ago, is that is the Kajiado County government, does it have the technical capacity to run this? And people ask that now, but then, no, we don't need to worry about that. Because USAID, the Nature Conservancy, and all these other uh, usual suspects that I've spoken about for years are going to step in with offers of capacity building, um, offers of money. You know, the, 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 much, uh, the much touted thing in Kenya that we call jobs, with the offers of jobs as drivers, rangers, etc. They'll offer to build offices. They will uh, offer to constitute boards etc and pay per diems for all the meetings to discuss this and all the meetings that will be running the management so there's per diem in kenya you know that's the magic um, that's the silver bullet if you want anything offer per diem 
So that, that's going to happen. And then the government will think, or the wider public will think, uh, Amboseli National Park is now being handed over to its rightful owners, which is the Maasai people of Kajiado. But no, they'll just be they'll just be sort of the regents. They'll be holding it on behalf of of uh, Western corporate interests who will quickly take control of it. And those who've been to Amboseli and are familiar with the area, they know that despite being a class A park, the relationship between KWS and uh, the, the, the park and the, the Maasai people around the park has been quite good, has been quite good. And despite the fact that these were not subject of formal agreements, when dry seasons come, the, range, the wetlands were being shared by Maasai livestock, the wildlife, and, and there were all these open corridors, etc. So there, there, there were obviously the discussions around these relationships and use of resources, and occasionally some disputes, but the relationship has been by and large good. When big corporate money comes in, there will be rangers there. They will be they will be armed. They will have armed patrols. There will be fences. They, they will be what we call perfect management of wildlife in the, the Western Roosevelt model, the Victorian or the Victorian gamekeeper model. And the Ma people will lose out. And by the Ma people I'm talking about the 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 common man or woman. Because another another vital aspect of colonialism that's going on here is the re elite capture, the recruitment of an elite to take the place of the rightful owners of the land, the local elite. So every time a local person who is under some pressure looks up, he will see his brother at the helm. He will see his chief at the helm. He'll see his elder at the helm. When he's, he's trying to find grazing for his uh, livestock, he will meet an armed ranger and he'll look in the face of the ranger and he'll see his brother. And he will not know what to do. And the other thing I've realized is that suddenly they've realized that we are onto them, these, these Western interests. So there's been a flurry of meetings around the country um, wanting to look at rangeland health, ethics, the sort of things I've been talking about. And I know because I've been invited to them. Even close friends have lied to me to try and get me to these meetings. There's one I I I, uh, I didn't go to in Naivasha. There's another one I was invited to in Nanyuki. I, I, didn't, I didn't go because of the, the people who attended. There's one I, I recently actually went to in, in, in Naromoru as well that I just did the first day and I, I walked out of it because I could see the hand of the Nature Conservancy and have no desire to, to work with them. But this, and, and they, were, they were even offering, they were offering per diem, which I didn't take. Um, so, so we can be sure about, we can be sure that I won't have a part of that money. But this shows that there's a concerted effort. It's not random what's going on. And the people whose future is at stake is the Ma people. These meetings discuss rangeland health as ecology. There's nothing to do with the people who use those rangelands. I've read, I've, I've seen what they're talking about. They're all talking about reduce reduction of or removal of livestock. You bring up anything to do with the livelihoods and people look at you like you're crazy. So the Ma people, I'm not sure how this is gonna happen, but somehow you, you people are gonna have to fight this thing. It's not gonna be easy, but the future, maybe this generation will be okay, but the children, two generations from now, people will be on the roadside with nowhere to go and nothing to eat. And it's not going to be, it's going to be ugly. So we have to think about this. And these are the philosophical questions that conservationists always avoid, but they're the ones running our country into trouble. Let's wake up. And the thing is, if, if I'm wrong about this, then we are fine. There's no problem. But I fear I'm right. And uh, posterity will prove me right or wrong, whatever the case is. Thanks for listening and have a thought about this, please, especially the Ma people, those with children and those, those younger generations. Think about this.